Okay, here we go. So have a look. So the calculators. All right, so some stuff we can do. If I want to take this original expression, one of the very nice things about these graphing calculators is that you can make it look exactly like it's supposed to look. You can make it look just like it would if you're writing it on a board or on paper. Right, so uh, I'm going to take this expression, and the first thing I want to do is 4 cubed. You know this, but real quick, what's, what button do I use to get up to an exponent? Carrot. Okay. So 4 carrot 3. How do I get out of the exponent? Uh, right arrow. Yep, right arrow takes me to the next part, right? So then I'm going to do minus. I don't have to put any parentheses. I can just do 8 times 6. Oops, sorry. I have to do absolute value. Forgot that. Okay, so where do I get the absolute value? Anybody know? Okay, I can go. One way to do it is I can go to the math screen. And notice when you go to the math screen, there's a there, there's a bunch of stuff that pops up. I get all these different menus. So this is the this is the math menu in the math screen. And it gives me all kinds of commonly used things. A lot of this stuff is calculus stuff at the bottom. But a lot of it's not too. If I scoot over to the right, I get to the, the number or the numerical menu. And here I've got imaginary parts, uh, greatest integer function, min, max, least common multiple, greatest common denominator. Lots of stuff you do with, you know, with numerical stuff, but just relating to numbers. What's at the very top? Absolute. Absolute value. Good. And we can keep going to the right, and we'll get into some other, you know, this, we'll deal with this pretty soon. This is coming up in a few weeks. You know, we'll start talking about complex numbers. There's some probability stuff, uh, permutations, combination stuff, and then finally there's some fraction stuff too, which gives us some fraction templates and things, right? Okay, but we just want the, the number menu and number one. We just hit enter, and it gives us the absolute value bars, and then we'll just put whatever we want to in the absolute value bars, okay? Another way to get there is a shortcut so that's, that's one way you can do it. And I just showed you that. I'll give you another shortcut. If you hit the alpha key, then F1, F2, F3, and F4, those are all little shortcut menus that get you there. It's really not that much faster. It's like one keystroke faster. But if I go alpha F2, it takes me to a menu that's got a bunch of stuff on it. There's absolute value, kind of the really commonly used thing. So that's probably the quickest way to get there is alpha F2, enter. We're there. Okay. So negative 8. Now, I'm going to do something wrong here to point something out. Does that look good? Looks okay, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, times 6. It uses the little asterisk instead of the dot, but otherwise it's the same. And then divided by 16. Now, if I hit the divided by, it shows up as a division symbol, but when I hit divided by, it gives me the slash. It's easier to write on the screen divided by 16, okay? All looks good, right? It's going to blow up. Oh, something went wrong. Yeah, anybody know what went wrong? Yours worked? Yes. But what I did, I did something wrong, purposely. No. Okay, if you want to know, the calculator will help you find it. If I go down to step two, which is go to, I can just type a two in. It goes right to the part that's wrong. What's wrong with that? Oh, you put minus instead of wrong. You did minus instead of uh, Okay, good. Yeah, now remember, on the calculator, minus is in operation. There's the negative symbol, right? So most common mistake people probably make on the calculators, but I just did. So I want to replace that minus sign with the negative sign, and then I'm good. And there's my 64. Okay? Okay, so far so good? All right, try another one. Try, let's skip down to something a little harder. Let's go to... For you guys, how about if we go down to oh, number five? No, no, it's a good question. You will not. On the test, there's going to be two parts. There's going to be a graphing utility part where you can use graphing calculators, or a lot of times I'll just, I'll just put a link to Desmos right in the test. And we'll practice that too. And you can use your calculator, so I don't care if you use calculators, whichever you prefer. And then there's going to be a portion of non-graphing utility part where you will not have access. It's just all got to be, you know, without the calculator. So when you're doing this stuff on the on the assignment, it's a great way to check your answers. 
although I gave you the answers anyway, you have access to them. But you want to make sure you can do this without a graphing calculator. And that goes all the way through the class. You've got to be able to do it both ways. Okay, so try number five. 